All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video, and today we are going to be installing an intake on my F3340i. The intake I have today is from Race Ready Performance, and they're a relatively new company. They actually asked me if I would try out this intake and make a video for you guys just to show you how it installs and how it works. And so far, I haven't really had any problems. It seems like a good product. It'll be a very familiar look and feel. You know, if you guys have been in the B58 community for a while, you'll kind of recognize the intake style right away. And the good news is it's still a cold air intake, just like stock. So it sucks in cold air from outside of the car. It's completely sealed off from the engine bay. And it has a bigger filter so that you can do things like reduce spool and have quicker response and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to install it on my car. And I will have a link down in the description if you guys want to check out the rest of their catalog. And yeah, hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So the first thing we need to do is remove all of the clips that are holding the upper intake box on. So there's one, two, three, and then there's a fourth one tucked almost underneath the intake tube. So you can just grab a flathead screwdriver and pop each one off. And then you can use the same screwdriver to loosen the hose clamp that's holding the upper air box on. And then finally, we're going to remove the MAF sensor. Unfortunately, on my car, I broke off the white tab. But normally, you'll just pop the white tab back, squeeze it in, and then this clip will pull off. In my case, I kind of have to use a pick tool to pry the tab open, and then it comes off. Next, we'll remove the upper intake box. You basically just lift it up and pull it straight out of the intake tube. Then we'll pull the air filter out and then the lower air box pulls straight up, but it is kind of stuck on some grommets. So you'll need to use a little bit of extra force to pull it and then it just comes out as well. Now, after that, we're going to remove the upper intake tube and normally this hose clamp is rotated. So just take a little bit of patience. In mine, I've rotated it this way so it's easier to access. And I can just use a flathead screwdriver to loosen it. And then you pull the upper intake tube straight off. Now our new intake comes with the silicone coupler. And you can see it's kind of tapering down. So we're going to put the bigger end on the turbo inlet. Just slide it on. And then you're going to grab one of your hose clamps and slide that on as well. And then we'll tighten it down just to make sure we don't have any vacuum leaks. Then we're going to grab our intake tube and slide that straight into the silicone coupler. Make sure you set up one of your hose clamps so that you can slide that onto the silicone as well. This intake does come with a heat shield, so you can see this is what it looks like. And the hole is where the intake tube slides in. So just to seal it off a little bit better, it comes with this like weather stripping. And we're going to slide that on the hole all the way around. And that'll create kind of a grommet that the intake tube will slide into. And then it has a mounting point right where this post is. And when you remove the inbox, you'll be able to see it. But it basically just unscrews. So you're going to unscrew that post. And this is what it looks like once you've fully removed it. Then we're going to slide the heat shield into place. It is a little bit of a tight fit. So just take your time. The first thing I did was slide it into the hole. And then you're going to need to line up the hole on the bottom of the heat shield with that little mounting stud where the post was attached. So again, just take your time. You should be able to line everything up. And this is how it will look with the actual stud going through the hole at the bottom of your heat shield. Then I just kind of reattach the post there. I think you can use one of the nuts that are supplied with the kit, but this is how I've always done it. You just kind of screw that post back in place and it'll secure it so that the heat shield stays in place. It also comes with some additional protection. I think this is just to prevent it from scratching up your engine bay. I probably should have put this on first, but you just kind of slide it onto this opening and that will ensure that, you know, that there aren't any sharp edges scratching up inside your engine bay. Then we're going to put on the actual intake filter and it is a good size filter. It also has the inside of the filter open so it can maximize the airflow. But uh, just slide that onto the intake tube. 
Keep in mind, it is a little bit of a slick type of rubber that's used on here, so it seems like it wants to slide back off. So just kind of hold it in place while you're tightening on the hose clamp, and then after that you shouldn't really have any issues keeping it on. Then we're going to mount the upper cover in place, and this one is a little bit tricky. You just need to pay attention because it uses these little tiny screws and washers that screw into the holes. So I just kind of lined up the holes on the cover with the heat shield and tightened it down on each of these three holes. And then once you had it kind of hand tight, I grabbed an Allen wrench and tightened them down a little bit more just to make sure they wouldn't move. But yeah, they are really small. Just make sure you don't drop any of these screws and you should be good to go. Now there is also a mounting point towards the back of the heat shield. And unfortunately on my car, I don't have anything here to hold it in place. But I did look it up on Real OEM and I found the part numbers for the screw and the grommet that go in that hole. So I'll put a link down in the description if you guys want to buy it. It's really cheap and you can basically just take the grommet piece and it pushes right into the square hole. You might need a hammer or a screwdriver or something to give you a little bit more force. Then we're going to line up all the holes and then put your screw in and tighten that down. So yeah, really simple and easy to make sure that this is fully secured. And then the last thing that we need to do is transfer the MAF sensor over to the intake. So there are two screws holding it on. I believe they are T20 screws. So go ahead and grab your Torx bit and unscrew those from both sides. And then we're going to remove the MAF sensor and slide that back into the intake tube. It can only slide in one way, so if it's not fitting, just turn it around and it should drop right in. And then there are two additional machine screws that come with the intake. Do not reuse the ones from your stock intake. Just grab the new screws and screw them in to both sides. And then once you've had that tightened down, you can plug back in your MAF sensor. And then at that point, you should be completely done. So this is what your intake will look like. Everything should be nice and clean in the engine bay. Like I said before, it's a pretty familiar look, but it's something that just completely seals up the intake and uses a much bigger filter so you can get more airflow without the intake sucking in a bunch of hot air from the engine bay. So yeah, I'll put a link down in the description if you guys are interested in buying. And I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.